How's it going everybody? So today we're gonna go over a string based problem called long press name that is currently being asked at Google. So the description says, your friend is typing his name into a keyboard. Sometimes when typing a character C, the key might get long pressed and the character will be typed one or more times. You examine the type characters of the keyboard. Return true if it is possible that it was your friend's name with some characters, possibly none, being long pressed. So we have two strings, name and typed, where name is equal to Alex and typed is equal to A-A-L-E-E-X. So if we were given this input, we would return true from this function. The reason why is because the characters in our type string are happening in the same order as the characters in our name string. So we have an A, an L, an E, and an X, right? But only the A character and the E character are long pressed because we have two of two A's and two E's. However, in our original name string, we only needed one A and one E. So we can boil this question down into two different questions. The first one is, are all the characters in our type string happening in the same order as the characters in our name string? And then the second question is, do we have the amount of characters that we need in every step to match our name string. If that's not making sense so far, it's okay. I'm gonna be going through a full example. So we're gonna need a couple different pointers to solve this problem. The first two pointers will be i and j. So our i variable is going to be a pointer that starts at index zero, that loops over all the characters in the name string. And then our j variable is going to start at index zero of our type string, and that's gonna loop over all the characters in that specific string. Another two variables we're gonna need are name character and typed character. So our name and typed character variables are going to keep track of what the current character is that we're looking at using these i and j variables that we initialized before. The last two variables we're going to need are a name index and typed index. So I'll definitely come back to name and typed index, but it will make more sense as we're going through the problem. So currently we have both our i and j pointers starting at index zero for both our name and type string. So now we just need to assign the characters that we're looking at. So our name character is a and our type character is also a. And we need to determine if these characters are the same. If they are not the same, that means we immediately return false from our function. In this case, they are the same. So now what we wanna do is count how many characters that are equal to each other in succession. So this is where our name and typed index variables are gonna come into play. Our name index is going to start at whatever i plus one is. So i is currently looking at index zero. So that means we have name index starting at one. And as for our typed index, that's gonna start at whatever j plus one is. So j is currently looking at zero, so we're gonna have our typed index start at one as well. So these yellow arrows are pointing to our name and typed indices. So let's look at name index. What we wanna do is look behind us and determine if those characters are the same. So obviously, L is not equal to A, so that means we don't want to iterate forward. Name index is going to stay at one. Now, as for our typed index, if we look backwards, we can see A and A are equal. So what that means is we need to increase our typed index. So our typed index is now looking at character L. And once again, we want to look behind us. We can see that L is not equal to A. So that means we do not want to increase our typed index again. What you may already realize is what we have done is we have now computed how many A's there are in both name and typed in succession. So if we were to do name index minus I, that would give us our count of that character. So if we do one minus zero, right, that would be one. And that corresponds to the single A that we came across. And likewise, if we did typed index minus j, two minus zero, that would be two. And that corresponds to the two a's that we looped over. 
So we're going to use these calculated values to determine if this character was long pressed or not. If it was not long pressed and we do not have enough characters, then we know we can return false. So since two is greater than one, that means we are okay. We can continue iterating and we're going to repeat this process until we get to the end of our name string. So the last step is we want to set I equal to our name index and J equal to our typed index. So now our I and J pointer moved to where our name and typed index were, and then name index and typed index moved directly in front of our I and J pointer. And also our name character and type character are now both looking at the character L. And since they are the same, that means we can continue. So if we look backwards from our name index to our I pointer, we can see that these are not the same. So that means we do not want to increase the index. Likewise, if we look backwards here, they're not the same, so we don't increase it. And now we just need to compute the calculations that we did in the previous step. So we do name index minus i, so that would be 2 minus 1, which is 1, and that corresponds to the single L that we came across. And then we do 3 typed index minus j, which is 2, and that also equals one, and that corresponds to this single L we came across. And so since we have an equal number of Ls, one and one, that means we're fine to continue iterating through these strings. And lastly, we want to assign our name index and type index to be equal to I and J. Now the current character we're looking at is E. So if we look backwards here, we can see that these characters are not the same. So we are not going to increase our name index. Now, if we look backwards on our type string, we can see they are equal. So what that means is we need to increase our typed index to be equal to index five. Once again, we look backwards, we can see that these characters are not the same. So we are finished iterating. And now we're going to compute the difference between our name index and our I pointer. So that would be three minus two, which is one. And that corresponds to the single E we have. And then we do typed index 5 minus j, which is 3. And so that is 2. And that corresponds to the two e's that we have here. Since we have a greater number of e's in our type string than our name string, that means we're still OK. And lastly, we want to assign name index and typed index to be equal to i and j. So now we're looking at the characters x and x. And our name and typed index are now outside of the bounds. So that means we don't need to iterate further. We just need to compute the difference between them. So if we do 4 minus 3, that is 1. And 6 minus 5, also 1. And both of these ones correspond to the single x that we have in each string. We can see that we have enough characters. And now we are finished iterating, so we would return true from this function. So we have a name and type string, and we need to determine if it is a long press name or not. So the first thing we can do is extract the lengths of these strings just to make our lives a bit easier. Now, one check we need to do is if our typed string is of a lesser length than our name string. If that is the case, we know we can return false. So we can say if n is less than m, return false. And now we can initialize our i and j pointer. So we'll say i is equal to 0, j is equal to 0. And we will continuously loop over name and typed string until they go out of bounds, right? So we could say while i is less than m and j is less than n. Now what we want to do inside of here is extract the characters that we're currently looking at. So we can say char name char and that will be equal to name dot char at i and then we're also going to have our typed char which is equal to typed char at j and if these characters are not equal to each other at this point we know we can return false from our function so if name char is not equal to type char simply return false. And now we're going to bring in those other two variables, name index and typed index. And remember, we always assign them 
to whatever i plus 1 is and j plus 1 is. So we can say int name index is equal to i plus 1, and typed index is equal to j plus 1. And now we need to count how many characters that we have in succession. So let's first do it for the name string. So we're going to do a while loop, and we are going to continuously do this while loop until either two cases happen. Either we go out of bounds or the characters are not equal. So we can say while our name index is less than m, because m is the length of our name, right? And name dot char at name index is equal to the character that we have taken out up top on line eight. So we can say if it is equal to our name char, then we know we can increase name index. And so this is actually building our count. And so we're going to do the same thing for our type string. It's the same exact logic. We can say type index is less than n because n is the length of our type string and typed char at our typed index is equal to type char and if that's the case we're going to increase our typed index now when we come outside of these while loops we need to determine the counts that we have come across. So in the scenario that we have a greater amount of that character in our type string, that means we're OK. And we don't need to return false. So we could say if our typed index minus j, if it's less than our name index minus i, then we know we need to return false because our typed index minus j is the count that we have come across in our typed string. And if it's less than what we have in our name string, then we know we can't fulfill that many characters. And now the last step is just to assign our i and j pointer equal to whatever name and typed index are. So we could say i is equal to name index and j is equal to typed index. And then finally, when we come Outside of this while loop, we can say return if i is greater than or equal to m and j is greater than or equal to n. The reason why we want to do this instead of just return true is because we may exit this while loop, but our j pointer might not have exhausted all of the characters inside of its string and likewise for our name string. So we have to make sure that both i and j pointer are outside of the bounds of both of the strings. So let's make sure that this code works. We'll submit it. And there we go. So our time complexity is going to be big O of m plus n, where m is the length of our name string and n is the length of our type string. It may seem like this is not a linear runtime algorithm because of line 14 and 15, but remember, we are only ever going to look at each character for each string a single time. In these while loops, this isn't like a nested loop where it's going to check each character multiple times. It's only going to check it a single time. And then as for our space complexity, this is constant. We don't initialize any extra memory in this algorithm. I know these Google questions can be really challenging. This problem was actually considered an easy problem, but I definitely wouldn't consider the solution an easy solution to come up with. But that is it for this video, guys, and I will see you guys in the next one.